This program is brought to you by the friends and partners of Biblical Life TV. Deep waters to nurture and empower the remnant for the last days. There is a power that is about ready to be released from heaven to those that seek after the things of the kingdom of God. When it comes to the word of God, there is a supernatural unction of the Holy Spirit to learn. God is up to something for those that will study to show yourself approved. Right now there's a lot of things in the kingdom that God is trying to establish that goes against people's theology. You need to understand your roots, where you came from. God may require us to change what we're doing to make walking in the kingdom a higher priority than it ever was before. We were never called to have a little light. We were called to be ablaze with the fire of God in this generation. Join the remnant from around the world who are empowered by the Word of God to fulfill God's purpose in these last days. God is speaking something different. That is going to be essential in the days ahead, and that's part of this anointing that we have to have. Prepare yourselves for spirit-filled teaching. Biblical Life TV. You stay at the altar and you wrestle with God until God touches the hollow of your thigh and you get up and you walk away a different man because your walk has changed. But when you do, the Holy Ghost moves in and you're connected to God. God moved on the inside of you. The Holy Spirit moved on the inside of the aspect of God that is extremely knowable. It empowers everything that he does on planet Earth. Well, they got to imitate that. 5G is more than just your cell phone. Do you know they already got plans beyond 5G? I've got an article that I, just, I finished reading here about a month ago. They said 5G is the first step, and they're already putting the components into 5G for the upgrade. It's called quantum internet. What does that mean? You get at the quantum level, quantum level is perfect for blockchain because with blockchain, you're not supposed to be able to hack it. The minute that you touch it, it's, your, your, your digital fingerprints are permanently recorded on it and all you need is a little bit of the data of the blockchain, of the blockchain. you can put it on another computer and it will replicate itself to replace all the information that you thought you deleted. And when you look at blockchain, and look it up on Wikipedia, they give, they give uh, uh, a, a Japanese name, which is a pseudonym for the creator of blockchain, but he doesn't exist. And some have said, you know, it's this guy, it's this crew, it's this crew. Many researchers are now beginning to believe that it was AI that developed the concept of blockchain to begin with. And it's going to go well beyond currency. It's blockchaining whoever is digitally connected. But when you begin dealing at, with quantum encryption, quantum encryption goes beyond blockchain. Let's say I'm going, let's say John here has something in, that's quantumly encrypted and I'm going to try to hack it. The moment I reach out and touch it, my blockchain ID is permanently attached to it, and he's immediately notified that I touched his data. Not even that I was able to unencrypt it because you can't quantum encryption, but you can't even touch it without the owner being immediately notified. And when you get into quantum internet, that means it is going to be, it, it, is, it, it goes beyond the 5G radio waves. It's going to blanket this planet at the quantum level with, with connectivity. That means, that means at the cellular level, everything, I don't know, I don't know if you can set up a, a Faraday cage or not that will block a quantum internet. That, and, and you don't have to worry, everybody gets five bars, okay? <laughs> everybody gets gigabit plus connection. The thing is, when, when you, when, let's go back to the, the diagram I have here. Because I want you to see the full picture. You begin putting it all together. They create a deity 
They're moving us toward hive mind, and the only way that they can move us toward hive mind is it has to be AI guided. The transhumanists are going to want to integrate with the AI to their God so that they can be upgraded that we're gonna have a global network that you can't run from, that we're gonna have blockchain, that not only is there a digital currency, you have to be a part of the digital community to be able to buy or sell, and that you can't escape this new universal digital ID, and that all of us beca become the internet of things. You see, one of the things that I have pondered is, okay, now when you receive the mark, you can't repent. So it has to be something that completely affects the mind and the will. And I have pondered, is it simply a, a DNA upgrade that once you, you know, they're going to try to make everybody gibberim or Nephilim like, like Nimrod had done. And so does it so change your DNA, you're no longer human to, to have the possibility to repent? Because I think there's a threshold that God says, now ah, when you go past this, you're no longer human, you don't get to repent. But if we, if we go with an ambiguous interface. That means there are no smartphones. It's embedded right here. That you have access to all the world's knowledge, that you can communicate with anybody anywhere. You can tap into the hive mind. You can share with the wealth of the communication of the world while you're gently being controlled by the AI. Oh, nothing can go wrong with that, right? Well, what did sci-fi tell us? Let me get to the right thing here. Let's see what Jean-Luc Picard says. <laughs> we see in the book of Revelation, they know Jesus is coming back, so his approach, just like we're detecting the burrow, we talked about that at lunch today, and they know it's coming, and we, we have things pointed out into space to detect stuff. They know when he comes that he's coming, so it, how, how that happens, I don't know. Can, can they, you know, does he open up a dimensional portal out by Pluto and work his way in? I don't know. But they know he's coming and they know his wrath is here and they shake their fists at him and curse him knowing that he's coming and getting ready to judge. Why do they do that when they know it's him? It's like, oh, poo, all the Christians were right. Maybe I need to repent. No! Your will has been taken away by the AI. Because, you know, the hive mind can turn ugly within humans, and therefore that ugliness has been suppressed and you brought into, into harmony with this new God. You see, these are some of the things that we're going to face when the Lord come, you know, before the Lord comes back, and then you have the UFO showing up and all kinds of other things. And they said, oh, we see you got our present, the AI. That's what we did in Roswell and gave you the components. We knew you'd get there. It's a very real possibility. But what I want to deal with is it's time for us to grow up. You see, because all of this is simply a cheap, techno, watcher-based imitation of what we really have possible as believers. But they have purposely kept us in infancy. In fact, they took us out of semi-maturity and dumbed us down to the place that in, in a day that you can do in-depth theological analysis with a push of a button on your computer, that you don't have to know Greek and Hebrew, but you can pull up some of the most famous lexicons on the planet in English and research Greek and Hebrew and all the wealth of these things. Biblical illiteracy is at an all-time high in the pulpit. You see, a lot of the stuff that Josh was dealing with, if those preachers would actually open up their Bibles and begin reading it from cover to cover, they would change what they teach. One of the greatest things that ever happened to me with all my education and everything else is when Mary Lou came out of her bondage, she began to question everything. And so I'd give her the party line of what I was taught in seminary. And she says, oh, really? Show, prove it to me. <laughs> and she would force me. And I said, okay, I have got to exegete the Scripture myself. And I'd exegete the Scripture myself. And I said, oh, dang, I was wrong. <laughs> when you actually look at the Greek and the Hebrew, 
That isn't what it says. I don't even know how they got that. There's been a few times I told Mary, I said, I don't know what they were smoking. <laughs> yeah, some of those old theologians with their pipes, you know, in the Reformation, they may not have always been tobacco. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> but the apostle Peter saw the day, the last days began on the day of Pentecost after the resurrection of the Messiah. We're still in the last days, but turn to your neighbor and say, yeah, but we're in the last of the last of the last days, okay? <laughs> this thing's been winding down for 2,000 years. And he said, this is what was spoken by the prophet uh, Joel. It shall come to pass in the last days, saith the Lord, I will pour my spirit. How's that for internet connectivity? <laughs> Holy Ghost connectivity. I will pour my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young man shall see visions, and your old man shall dream dreams. That's why I still see visions. I refuse to acknowledge the fact that I'm getting old. <laughs> I just have nighttime visions while I'm asleep, all right? And on my servants and on my headmaids I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show wonders in the heavens above, and in signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. Have we got there yet with that part? You see, Peter was prophesying, saying, this is beginning, and this is where we're heading. And how many know he's talking about where we're getting ready to head? Okay. But then he says, the, the sun shall be dark and the moon shall be blood before the great and uh, notable day of the Lord, which is the, the day of the Lord is the Valley of Armageddon. It's where everybody gets their comeuppance. Okay? So whenever you talk about the day of the Lord, that, that is the day of his wrath, it's, it's one event. Now, it's, it's memorialized in the day of atonement. That, you know, you have 10 days, 10 days of awe that you're told, okay, from the announcements that come with the Feast of Trumpets. You have 10 days to get right with God, get right with man. If you don't humble yourself, you're koshered, you're cut off. And it's a divine rehearsal of the Valley of Armageddon. So he says, we're heading on now, now whosoever shall believe in the name of the Lord shall be saved. But the first part of it, he said, listen, I'm going to pour out my spirit on all flesh and we have replaced the dynamics of the kingdom with the dynamics of religiosity. That we are, we are infantile in our walk in the Spirit of God. We don't understand kingdom. We don't, we don't understand. And how many times have believers been deceived because, brother, he said all the right things. Yes, Elmer Gantry can. Now, for those of you that don't know, aren't old enough to know who Elmer Gantry was, he was a character played by Burke Lancaster that was a grifter that began preaching because he saw money in it. Okay? And people will come in, they learn your terminology, they, they say all the right things. And, and I, I have, guys, I had one guy go through our seminary. He had been a minute pastor for years, went through our seminary. Ten years after he graduated, he emailed me and said, while I was sitting in jail, I'm thinking, well, wait, what, what, what? <laughs> things happened. He got drunk, started taking drugs, ended up in jail. Okay, so you, were, you pastored for 20 years, went to seminary, pastored another 10 years, now you're sitting in jail. And he said, I realized I was never saved. Wow. I got saved in prison. I wonder how many times that has been replicated in the church. See, because I, don't, I, I, I cannot function in a normal church. I don't do politics. I am so quick to tell you that if you don't like the Word of God, let the door hit you where the good Lord split you. Okay, I don't care. <laughs> right before I wrote the Shiner Directive, I'm sitting there, you know, preaching to my congregation. I said, that's it, I'm done. I'm only going to minister to the remnant. There's the door. And now my door's locked, and I have a private TV studio. I don't care about numbers. All I care about is I got a handful of people that I have mentored in my own family, and they, they, the, 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 the harder I preach, the happier they get. I don't have to worry about people manifesting demons or people with DID popping up right in the middle trying to curse me or anything like that. I can just concentrate on ministering the Word. And I'm going to deal with the remnant. I don't care where they are in the world. And what I found about the remnant, the more straight shooter you are, the more you become biblical, the more that you teach the Word of God, the happier they get. 
please stomp on my toes. If, my to you know, if, if, I, if I let the devil get my toes out in the aisle, please stomp on them. Let me know before he cuts them off, please. We, we need to change our dynamics in the last days. It's not what the guy says, it's what the guy does. It's the spirit of the man. I've been around the world and what I've done in ministry, and I have been in places that neither one of us spoke the same language. But what I could sense was Jesus. What I could sense was the kingdom. And I knew it was a brother. Or I knew it was a sister, or he was a sister in the Lord. Sometimes at the airport, if you really become sensitive to the things of the kingdom of God because you have returned back to the basics, disciplines of the faith, and it starts with spending time in the word, you got to get back into kingdom programming because it's got to erase the programming of Babylon that you spent your whole life being programmed by the world into and have your brains washed by the water of the word. And quit arguing with the word. I was amazed at this fact. No matter how much education I have, I have discovered God's always right and I'm always wrong. <laughs> You know, anymore, you know, God will deal with me with something, and I'll start arguing with God, and God says, really, we're still there? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> so which of my old teachings do I need to delete from the Internet? <laughs> you know? we're, we're supposed to do this and approach God with meekness. There's things that we see in the book of Acts that should be commonplace in the church. The book of Acts does not have an end. And with every epistle, there, you can sense there's a winding down of it. You know, there's coming to a close because, you know, the apostle Paul or Peter or whatever, they have wound up with the things, they, they, they have finished their argument, their discussion or whatever. And with Paul, it's like Jeopardy. you got to figure out the question before you can understand the book. Amen? Because he was writing epistles. He learned from Gamaliel. And it was Gamaliel would be given a problem. He would pray, research scripture, and he would give them an answer via an epistle. That's where the apostle Paul got the idea. And so you have to figure out the question to understand what he told you. And so as, as, you, as you begin doing these things and, and learning these things, the book of Acts does not have a conclusion because we're still walking in it. But we've not been told that. And I, and I was raised missionary Baptist. I surrendered at a missionary Baptist altar. I tell people I'm Baptocostal with a good twist of Hebraic heritage. I'm kind of like that swirly ice cream, you know. And what I, you know, what I was taught is, you know, we need to get back to the book of Acts. And, 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 and every, that's what everybody always says, but they forget two components of the book of Acts. We're getting ready to get back there today. They became a minority. They were a minority. And they were persecuted. What I have found is tribulation will push you into places that you normally wouldn't go. Brother Mike... What did it take you to begin celebrating the feast and, and to celebrate the Sabbath? I had people trying to kill me. I had witches trying to kill me. And everything I had was blowing up. Two years or two or five years earlier, I, I was invited to a colloquium by Dr. John Gar. They had scholars from around the world teaching on Hebraic heritage. They loved on me. I took all the materials, and when I really wanted to sound cool, I would borrow something. You want to hear something mysterious out of, out of Hebraic concepts? Let me razzle-dazzle. I'd pull something out. This is what Dr. Dwight Pryor said or, or Marv Wilson or some of the others, you know, and it, it'd make me sound very profound, you know. But yeah, then put it back on the shelf. But when the prophecy started hitting the fan in my life, and I had witches get in my face. You see, we can debate this thing about, you know, Christmas and all this stuff. For me, it's a matter of spiritual warfare. And I don't share this very often because it, it's, you, people want to fight. And I, don't, I don't fight. I just live it and there's proof. I had witches get in my face and say, we got you this year. 
because you're going to do Christmas, that's a violation of Torah. I'm saying, to what? And that's our holiday, and we're going to be able to, it's going to open a door to us, and we're going to get you. And oh, by the way, we have witches attend Christmas and Easter services all over the world. They pull that psychic violation from those congregations so they can use it to attack those congregations the rest of the year. And they're actually very blatant about it. They, they call us thieves. And my wife, I mean, we, we had a Christmas room in our house, okay? My wife burned up and she says, I'll show you why, Jack. I'm going to show you some power because everybody in the world is going to be talking about Jesus. We got sicker than we ever got in our life. Everything I owned started breaking down, falling apart. Uh, guys, I would bring stuff home from Walmart, open up the box, and it'd go, Bleh. I go, I've had about enough of this. So I went to the Lord, and he said, well, he said, they, they told you the truth, and you were too arrogant. Now you research it. I researched it, and I said, okay, that's it. We're going we're gonna to go back to the biblical feast. They're all about Jesus anyway. Every one of them's about Jesus. And if you're doing it, and Jesus isn't the epicenter of it, you're doing it wrong, okay? And some Christians thought I was weird. The occult got livid over it. They got mad because I shut in my life one of the major doors they used. And then they had to try, you know, and uh, I'm, I'm very sensitive about a lot of things. Like for me, I will not use a Star of David because it's also a hexagram that was used by the occult long before the Jewish people ever used it. And there's debate about even how they used it. And so I don't use it. And I don't use a star either because I don't need a pentapha or a baphomet, either one. And, but, here, here's, and, but here's what Ozark occultists do. Okay, now Ozark occultists. Anybody from the Ozarks? Okay. I know Mike Lakes of the devil because I saw him the other day with an upside down star of David on his t-shirt. <laughs> if you can get that bad boy upside down and know it's upside down instead of right up, you're, you're a better man than me. We, we have all these, so for me, it's a matter of spiritual warfare. I returned to publicity because I had people trying to kill me. They had assassins after us. They harassed us. They sabotaged our vehicles. Mary and I have been poisoned. We've this over and over and over things, again, that God supernaturally delivered us from. I, I've seen God pick up a semi, pick it up like a Tonka truck, and set it back on the right side of the road so it wouldn't wipe us off the road. I've been on chases on the highway, and I, I feel like I'm in one of those Born Identity movies, you know, when, but not with a broke-down minivan, okay? <laughs> and Mary says, wait, wait, wait. And we get right to the exit, and we dive off the exit. A car stops in the passing lane and backs up on a four-lane highway to go back after us. I said, okay, it's on now. I'm going to get all these four cylinders, and we're going, baby, you know? <laughs> Me, Jesus, and four cylinders, and here we go. And God supernaturally delivered us time and time again. There were times when you, when you begin experiencing the peace of God. The Bible says, let the peace of God be your empire, but we never do anything to become familiar with the peace of God. It only comes in the presence of the Holy Spirit. And, and Mary and I, when we began studying and stuff in the Sabbath, you know, you begin lighting the two candles and all this stuff. I said, let's give it a try. You know, I, I've not been big for ceremony or anything else. And so we gather, we light the two candles and pray, and the Holy Ghost came in and filled the place where I'm thinking, if I could have this in the service, we, we'd have a thousand people here. This, God made a point, Phew. okay, I think we're going to do this, you know. <laughs> Because God was trying to get our attention. And once I, I got used to that peace, when it began to be pulled back, okay, something's wrong. We're going up to, to meet somebody, and God just takes our peace. It's like Mary and I start squirming in our seat in the car, and we're supposed to be there for dinner in 20 minutes, and I'm squirming, and I'm not late. And she says, I can't take it. Turn around the exit. Call. I'm, I'm going to call him, tell him we can't come. We go off the exit, go back on, begin going on the highway. As soon as we get on the highway, going the other way, state patrol pulls us over and thinking, man, I didn't even get up to 45 yet. <laughs> and and there's, a, there's a black sports car that he, that he, this guy is screaming at the guy. And then comes up and says, did you see him? 
No, well, he was heading at, at, your, at you at 105 miles an hour. You see, following the peace of God, God put us in a place. How many know that guy didn't drive off after that? They probably ended up carting him off to jail. And then he went back and started screaming at the guy as we drove off. We didn't wait to see what. But, but because we, we, we sensed the peace of God being pulled back, we corrected ourselves and said, okay, we're not going here because God is telling us something is wrong. It was a setup. We were supposed to die. And because we obeyed the peace of God, God had that state trooper there and nailed him before he could get to us. Because in a minivan, you clip the back corner of it, we go tumbling at 70 miles an hour on the highway. Bad news for us. But God was there. You see, God is there. We, we, we see things in the book of Acts of people having visions of people being teleported. Come on. He, did, he didn't wait for Uber to show up to take him to go talk to the man. It's this, I'm here, I'm there. And it's still happening today. I've got reports of a man in Texas, and this was back in the, in the 80s. He's an oil. The fallen immortals that rule the kingdom of darkness have enabled the esoteric societies that control this world to nearly fulfill Nimrod's dark directive. They have taken society down the Luciferian rabbit hole into a technological matrix of darkness. But the Almighty will not allow the enemy to bring his demonic forces for the final showdown without raising up one of his own. God is waking up people around the world who are shaking off their techno-sorcery-induced spiritual slumber and are answering heaven's call. There is an end-time empowerment coming for God's remnant, and it is beginning to unfold in our day. It is time to awaken, be empowered, and become the Sheerith in this generation. The Sheerith Imperative is a must-have tactical manual for God's remnant in the last days. Get your copy at kingdomintelligencebriefing.com that's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. Hell may have its directive, but heaven has its imperative. Thank you for watching Biblical Life TV. We hope and pray that today's program edified you in the Word of God. Stay informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.